Uh, let me tell you guys a little story about the importance of afternoon cafecito. Conceptually speaking, when you're drinking your afternoon cafecito, you have to keep in mind the fact that we're constantly working on our vibe, our energy, and our surrounding, the actual aura of everything around us, you know? So the afternoon cafecito is self-care in action. It's basically poetry in motion, okay? So, oh. Dude, I'm gonna end up fucking, oh. I'm gonna end up fucking passing out, oh. If I keep, uh, if I keep talking in that fucking mask. But yeah. Afternoon cafecito is basically a testament to keeping in check our day-to-day, minute-to-minute, hour-to-hour aura and energy. And everybody's gonna have their coffee in the morning, right? Because you gotta start everything off right. If you can start everything off right without coffee, you're already ahead of the curve, you know what I mean? You know, getting your morning coffee is what everybody's doing and it's just like, you know, it's that same routine that I was talking about, you know, where it's just like, you know, you gotta be different, all right? You gotta get fucking sassy, all right? Even if you, you know, even if it's not, you know, necessarily in your blood, or, you know, in your normal, you know, personality type to get sassy. Just like I gave people homework to talk to a girl or someone they've never met, you know, to have dialogue and conversation this week, you know, I challenge you guys to get fucking sassy. You don't have to get sassy with someone else. Just get in touch with your inner sass, all right? That's going to help you kick ass out there, all right? And then tell them to fucking go touch grass. You know, work on your snapping, work on your head bobs, you know? These are all things that you need to know. It, 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 it all comes full circle, I'm telling you. But your afternoon cafecito... That's going to be the difference between your good day and bad day, okay? Put it this way. I used to constantly rely on my morning coffee to make me happy. I just w- I woke up pissed. I hated the day. I was, you know, my mood, my vibes were all bad. And I was, you know, I'd, I'd be very reliant on everybody else, including my cafecito, to make me happy, you know, to, to make things better, you know? And... When you're relying on someone else to bring you that, you're putting your day, your well-being, and your expectations in someone else's control. That's the worst thing possible. You are literally, you have to focus on you first and foremost. You know, get yourself right, which actually leads me to what I'm going to talk about tonight. This is kind of a surprise topic, and it goes how we have to focus on taking care of ourselves first before we should be taking care of others. Now, there's certain circumstances where, you know, we're put into situations where we have to care for others. But if you have the time, if you're in a place in your life where you can work on yourself and take the time to, you know, hermit crab away, you know, maybe distance yourself from people, maybe delete your social media for a couple months, maybe, you know, stop. Oh, sorry. I think Big Bird peed earlier and just says, Can we, we need to work on this, all right? Look at me. Okay? God, I'm sick and tired of this. You're like 13 years old now, all right? I know, I know you're a bird and bird years, you know, you're still like three, but you know, you really need to, all right, we'll talk later. Um, <clears throat> but if you're in a place in your life where you have the time and the availability and the ability to work on yourself and fix yourself the best that you can, you have to really take advantage of that. You have to understand that not a lot of people can do that. And it's, it's, a, it's a tough reality and, and, con, and, you know, and, you know, it's a tough reality to grasp because so many people are in a situation where they're a single mother, you know, and they have three, they have three little ones, you know, or they just in general have kids and, when you have kids and you're dealing with your own stuff, 
I can only imagine how hard parenting is, you know? That's why I commend all parents out there. And I have the utmost respect for, you know, people that have children and you're grinding your day-to-day -day life. You're parenting, you're working, you're trying to focus on yourself. These parents and these people that have children and that have other responsibilities that they have to put before themselves, they have the same things going on that we do. Shit that I've gone through, someone's went through that as a parent, as a single parent, and has gone through worse. A thousand times worse than what I've went through. You know? I understand that and I sympathize with that. It's fucked up. It's a hard, it's a hard reality to grasp. And, and, and you know, I, I, I can't express in the deepest part of my heart how much it hurts to know what that person or those people were going through, you know what I mean? So that's why, you know, it's, look, jokes are jokes and I can go on my rant, I can fucking dance, I can mess around. We all have so many things that go into our personality and who makes us, what makes us us, you know what I mean? And I think it's more like, you know, so many people feel like they have to be so consistent and stick to like, one, two, or three things that their personality type is what most people think they are. You know, someone thinks, oh, this person's peppy, you know, this person's talkative, this person's outgoing. Those three things, you know, that one particular person might think because everybody says that about them, that those three things are all that define them. And so they carry themselves day to day and they try to hit on those three things because anything outside of those three things something's wrong with them oh what's wrong are you okay you know how much that triggers people when people act like that and everybody's all up in your fucking shit you know it's and, and to be honest with you that's why i love not being around people a lot you know it's such a breath of fresh air and a alleviation of just freedom of being clear you know what i mean being away from all that and that's a huge, I'm um, not even lying, it's a huge reason why I'm at where I'm at. And why I've gotten where I've gotten is because I had the time, thank God, I've had the time and the privilege to be able to take the time for myself, to work on myself and to do what I have to do to get where I am. And it's not the case for everybody and it's tough, but that's why I'm saying is if you do have the time, let's say you live with your parents, let's say, you even like me, you live alone, you don't have kids, you don't have, you're not in a relationship. You know, you have the time and the, and the ability to work on yourself and put you first. You absolutely have to do that, you know? Because if you don't work on you first, there's no way that you're going to be able to help others the way you wanna help them, love others the way you wanna help them and live your life the way you want to live it. You know what I mean? You will literally just, be, you know, be living a life in fear, a life half lived, you know? And it's it's tough, you know, it's it's rough um, across the board. And that's why, you know, me and there's so many people out there that want to help, you know, I don't, I don't know all of them either. You know, I, I've been meeting them here and there on social media and it's been a pleasure, honestly, people that reach out, people that follow me, people that comment, people that like, you have no idea how much that means to me, you know, cause it's an actual representation tangibly showing me that what I'm doing and, and, and how I'm putting my content, I was actually helping people, you know? And I also understand like, trust me, the rate at which I do things is because I'm in this situation, you know, it's because I'm single, it's because I live alone, it's because I don't have I don't even have pets. I have no pets right now. I have no children. So my response, my days are, it's just for, it's, it's for you guys. I'm dedicating my day to day and the hours of my day for, to you guys. And I'm loving doing it. That's, it's, it's the win-win right there, you know? So that's why I have nothing but amazing things to say about like this entire experience. It's been awesome, you know, just talking to, you know, new people, meeting new people and, you know, I'm just excited for what the future bring will bring, but I'm not focused on it either. I'm focused on it right now, you know what I mean? You know, to be honest, I'm sitting here right now, but I don't know in an hour or two if I'm gonna be filming a music video, if I'm gonna be 
maybe writing some poems. Maybe I might want to start writing some songs because I heard some. I heard Kalu's shit today. You guys got to listen to that on Spotify. Kalu, bro, that album hits. It's fucking dope. You guys got to listen to it. Damn. You guys gotta listen to it, and it's it, it motivated me because back in the day, I'd, I'd write songs like crazy. You know, I had friends that I wrote songs with, and I, at, at a point in time, we slapped together probably around twenty to thirty songs. And like I said before, like our theme was called like it was rock, definitely rock. You know, heavy. You know, sometimes lighter, but it was like the theme that you we we called it was scary beauty. So it's like, see how that has a twofold already right there it was scary beauty. Um, so, yeah, I don't know where the day is going to take me, but that's the beauty of the unknown, and the unknown used to scare me, so you see how I flipped that? The unknown used to scare me, now the unknown excites me, and, you know, this also excites me, too. Oh, damn it. Sorry, I thought it was going to be a good one. Anyways, oh, I just wanted to, um, get comfy. Let you guys know the importance of afternoon cafecito. You know, there's definitely more I can speak to on that, but mm, I gotta tell you, honestly speaking, afternoon cafecito is for a big chunk of my life in my sobriety. It's helped me so much. Little things, just the little things in life, you guys. It sounds crazy, maybe I sound crazy, maybe I am crazy, but you know, my afternoon cafecito when I would wake up and, you know, this is the thing is sometimes I was having like three, four coffees a day, you know, while I was sober and everything, but it's just, I was replacing it. You know, the way I would drink and use before I was replacing that with coffee. So there was definitely a reality of that being the case with my life. And then it was, you know, I'm t telling people about that and they're telling me like, bro, you have enough energy on your own. You don't need coffee. And they're absolutely right, you know, but I just... This is, I have an addictive personality, and it's always gonna. This is, I'm never. It's never. You know, I, all I can do is treat it and 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 work on it every day, and I'm doing my best. You know, but you know, sometimes I don't even drink coffee anymore. I'll go a couple of days without even drinking coffee, and like it doesn't phase me. It's not. It doesn't. It's not even on my mind. But if I do have a coffee, I want one in the afternoon. Now you know, and it wasn't like that before. It was always like. The first thing I, you know, in my mind in the morning was I got to get my coffee, you know. That coffee's going to help me take a shit. That coffee's going to help me feel better. It's going to bring me vibes, the smell of it, the taste of it. What, what, what coffee does to me mentally, I've learned, is something that I can do organically, okay? Trust me, th there's nothing that, you know, that, after, that coffee that you have and the vibes that it brings, like, I'm not knocking it. Like, there's nothing that can replace this right here or your Starbucks, or, you know, whatever. That right there is a vibe in itself. Like, your day kind of sucks. You know, you get in your car, you get in your warm car, you're sitting on your warm seat. That warmth, you know, hits your body, and it's, you know, you can close your eyes real quick, maybe take a deep breath for yourself, you're alone. And that 10, 15-minute drive, maybe 5, 10-minute drive to go to the drive through get, you know, wait in line to get your Starbucks, or whether you use the app or not, all of that goes into, like, a very relaxing experience that's therapeutic for a lot of people you know what i mean so that's why starbucks and you know coffee is such a huge thing because we are very reliant on that to bring us what life isn't bringing us normally you know on, on, a, on a regular basis on a regular flatline base level life isn't meeting our expectations of what we want and you know how happy we want to be and how good we want to feel so we're looking for our fix right here you know <sighs> sometimes i drink coffee like fucking wine you see how i just switched it around in my mouth you know gotta give it a little swirl right here Sometimes I drink coffee like fucking wine. You see how I just switched it around in my mouth, you know? Gotta give it a little swirl right here. I'm gonna put this shit in like a crystal glass, try to make some music. Maybe I'll like loop that in fucking lo-fi and shit, make a fucking album based on that, you know? But, damn, dude, see, this is why, like, you know, I've never owned a double wall cup. 
but it's one of the pet peeves that makes me the angriest in life. I literally want to sock my fucking wall because my fucking cups just bleed and melt all over the place. It's like, fuck, man, you can't leave them alone for two minutes before they're fucking spraying waterfalls and shit all over the place, you know? It's fucked up. Pisses me off. You know, and tomorrow I want chicken stars. I want to go to, I want to get chicken stars. That's all I want. I don't want it with double be- wake, double Western bacon or the Baconator or anything. And, uh, you know, anything else from Carl's. I just want chicken stars. You know, those waffle crisp cut fries. You know, that's what I want tomorrow. And I think that they're, you know, their deal is on Wednesday, but I want it tomorrow. So I'm going to get it. Nothing's going to stop me. But, you know. I'm going to look at the polls. I'll let the tribe speak for what I'm going to talk about tonight. And I already did kind of touch on how you have to take care of yourself first before you take care of others. But there's a lot more that goes into that, and I'd like to elaborate on it more. It deserves its own 15 minutes. Um, but so does Cafecito. So I'm, I'm glad that I was able to, like, express that a little bit because, you know, it is the little things in life. And um, afternoon Cafecito, I've kind of humanized it. <laughs> It's kind of taken the form of like a of like a, a person, you know what I mean? Like, I don't feel alone when I have my afternoon cafecito. You know, I'll throw it in my car, I'll listen to music, and like, it's like it's like it's there with me. You know what I mean? Sometimes I talk to it. it look, it's sweaty right now. It's getting nervous. It's all damn, mama, calm down. Fuck. I feel like everything is just damn. I don't know, man. There's something in the air, but I'm like. Being at a chonga, dude, I just, I feel like I'm, I'm kind of in heat, low key, you know? Like, trying to curb it, but it's curb your enthusiasm, I guess. Anywho, we'll see where the night takes us, you guys. Thank you very much for giving me the time of day, for being here with me. And Big Bird, you want to say goodbye? Ow, oh, fuck that me. You behave. Tell him you're sorry. I'm sorry.